Good morning, good morning. What's up, guys? Yeah, Mitch is looking for his headphones this morning. All right, good, good. He's got his headphones. All right, so watching a few different stocks this morning. Uh, main two watches are RKDA, MTSL. Uh, also watching DM. Uh, you can see it's gapping up from 1365 to 1665. Uh, MTSL gapping up from 290 all the way or from 250 to 290 rkda is probably my favorite gapping up from 688 to 830 we also have smit although uh, pretty low volume but watching it regardless uh watching snes for a small gap here from 148 to 161 so gapping up about uh what is that 13 cents CBIO looking for a second day fade possible VWAP projection on this one um, It faded pretty hard yesterday if it can break under that 1050 1060 level 1070 I'll watch it closely. I uh, still got a ways to drop though, but keep an eye on that watching RCO in here uh, Gapping up from 160 to 192 went all the way up to 225. So it looks decent uh, look at eBay eBay starting to tank in pre this morning uh, down from 37.95 to 34.71. I'll have to look up the news on eBay. Um, also watching PED maybe for a second day wash or a second day run. Uh, we'll see which way it goes. It's sitting right around the half dollar at 2.49 now, so we'll see if it can hold support over that level. Uh, watching STAF spiked a little bit in pre, came back down and sitting at the whole dollar of three now. Uh, it has a lot of support at this 285 level, this 280, 285 level. So we're watching it under the, see if it washes out uh, for a short, maybe down to the low of yesterday at 245, 250. So watching that. Uh, the last one I'm looking at is RIOT. And with this, I'm going to be watching, uh, with these, I'm going to be watching the rest of these crypto related stocks just to see what they do, like uh, RIOT, SRAX, MARA, DPW, and stuff like that. All right, all right, all right. So, let's catch back up on the chat. Good morning, Adelie. How you doing? Good morning, Missouri. Good morning, brother. Good morning, sweetie pie. Good to see you in the morning, sweetie pie. You know. <laughs> Questions about how much you can lose with the trade net funded account. I'm thinking about getting it soon. Thanks. Uh, yeah, with a, it's not a trade net funded account. It's a TEFS funded account. So TEFS partners with trade net. Uh, the max you can lose is under thirteen thousand three hundred. Uh, if you get the intro package with the other packages, I'm not quite sure, but I know with the intro package, which is the $500 one, uh, you can't go under 13,300. So it's a $700 max loss. And so for instance, if you brought your account up to 15,000, uh, you know, if you, if you made a grand profit, your max loss would still be 13,300. It would just be a four, or, uh, what would that be? Um, yeah, 14,000 max loss or 1400 max loss or 1700. Sorry. It's too early. I haven't drinking my coffee yet, but I hope that makes sense. Uh, good morning. Cool. JJ seven Christian. Good morning. Lucas. What's up, brother? Good morning. Tiny. Good morning. Cool. That's right. Cool says, can anyone name a better duo than John and Mitch in the morning? Nope. <laughs> right. For sure. Uh, Adam, Listen, cool, yo. These guys are as good as they come. Honest, clear, straight to the point. Stick to what you got, buddy. Yeah, appreciate it, Adam. We try, brother. We try, man. Yep. Netron, good morning. Uh, Sean, good morning. Seven, good morning. Yeah, appreciate it, Adam. Appreciate it, cool. Uh, let's see. AH, good morning. I know, man. Good morning, Heath. Good morning, the best. Good morning, Jose. What's up, guys? Hope everyone's having a good morning. All right, but yeah, look at eBay. Sorry. Um, Yeah, I'll look up the news in a second, try to figure out what's going on with that one. Good morning, Bamboo. Here's my watch list if, if anybody wants it. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can see it turning back down. Yeah, I mean, if it breaks underneath 3395, which is unlikely today, but I mean, it's possible. Wait, actually, no, that's not. Oh, it's that's definitely possible today. So yeah, if it breaks underneath that low of the last year, let's see what the low of the last three years is. It's not the low of the last three years, but the low of the last year is, man, uh, where is it? There it is. The low of the last year it is about 34, 3395 is the exact low of the last year. So if it breaks under there, it could tank. We'll watch it, you know. Uh, good morning, Smitty. Right. Uh, Brendan asks, is RKDA tradable? Yes, it is. RKDA is tradable this morning on trade net, on TEFs. So, all right. So, yeah, I, I've checked some of these. Um, RKDA is tradable, MTSL is tradable. Unfortunately, DM is not tradable. Uh, eBay is pr most likely tradable. Yeah, it's tradable. Uh, SNES is tradable. CBIO is tradable. Uh, RCON is tradable. Uh, PED tradable. STAF is tradable. And RIOT is tradable. So a large majority of these are tradable. Um, unfortunately, DM is not and SMIT is not. So appreciate the sub, Jose. Welcome, brother. Appreciate it, man. All right, so... I've had three green days this week. I actually haven't had a losing trade that I can remember this week. So I've had nothing but profitable trades. Hopefully I can keep that streak going today. Uh, we'll see. Going to take it slow though. Um, uh, so let's go over the news. What's up, Christian? Good morning, brother. CPST. Uh, CPST is not tradable, unfortunately. All right, so let's go over the news. All right, so the first one I'm looking at is RKDA. Pretty big, nice spike here. Um, let's see, so it's up. RKDA is up. After it announced a key milestone achievement in development for extended shelf life tomatoes uh, with partner Shirium Bioseed. Uh, so yeah, key milestone achieved in development of extended shelf life tomatoes. They partnered with uh, Bioseed, Shirium, uh, Shirium Bioseed. And uh, it only has a 1.3 million float for RKDA. So this thing could really go... And a few people are going, you know, I think a lot of people are going to be watching RKDA. Uh, you can see MTSL gapping up as well. MTSL. Um, I don't see much for MTSL this morning. Yeah, I don't see anything, any catalyst for MTSL. So going to be watching it on the short side. See if it can uh, wash out some. Give me a nice VWAP fade. Watching DM as well. DM. Don't think this one has any catalyst either. Uh, let's see. Yeah, n yeah, man, I'm sliding into that DM, brother. <laughs> sliding into that DM, brother. I can't slide into that DM though, because it's not tradable. You know what I mean? So, I know, dude. I know, man. But yeah, DM's not tradable, unfortunately. No known catalyst that I can find for DM. Unfortunately, let's look at eBay, see why eBay is doing what it's doing. Let's see. Yeah. Right, well, here's the thing. Like, as an Amazon seller, I think eBay is going downhill, you know? And I, I don't really know, but I just think... Mo 
For sure. You know what I mean? Amazon does it because they sell new products as well. And so it's like it's hard to compete with eBay because it's like people are so used to using Amazon. In the last two years, two or three years, Amazon has just grown substantially. And it's hard to compete with uh, Amazon if you're eBay. Right. Uh, so let's see. eBay. Uh, just trying to find what's going on with it. All right, so eBay missed revenue expectations for its second quarter. Um, beats on earnings as well. Uh, they did. They they. Uh, let's see. They they did do better with adjusted earnings, which were fifty three cents a share, and they beat the uh, fifty one cents a share analyst uh, rate, uh, analyst expectation. So that's good. Um, revenue rose nine percent to two point sixty four billion, but they ultimately missed the consensus forecast of two point sixty six billion. So I guess the second quarter bad results is making eBay down. I guess it's just second quarter revenue and stuff like that. Let's see if I can find anything else. Yeah, they're just talking about the second quarter. Uh, I think it's just all second quarter. Uh, a lot of analysts have downgraded eBay. Uh, they cut to an outperform, uh, downgraded. So kind of a, a lot of analyst actions on them as well. All right, so looking at SNES, moving on here. Uh, SNES. Super Nintendo, you know. Um, yeah, so this one actually has a catalyst. Uh, this one is up because they sell, they sold ContraPest to Pestmaster for first California deployment. Yeah, the company said it sold ContraPest to Pestmaster Services for the first development in California. Uh, Pestmaster ultimately plans to deploy ContraPest to new and existing customers who have been pre-selected. Uh, that's good news for SNES. We'll see what happens with it, though. Um, next one I'm looking at is RCON. RCON only gapping up about 11 cents at this point, maybe 10 cents. Uh, came all the way back down. And it is up because it put out a release that said it completed the first stage of oily sludge protection in the human oil field. Uh, let's see. Yeah, they're a China-based independent solutions integrator in the oil field service. Yeah, they announced they completed the first stage of construction of a comprehensive disposal treatment project in Yumen City, Gansu Province through its 51% subsidiary. Uh, so that's good news for RCON. It's not up that much. We'll watch it. I'm watching it under this 150 level, see if it drops under the low of yesterday, and we'll see what it does if it does do that. Uh, PED, I'm pretty sure PED is just up on momentum and technicals from the last week or two, so I'm going to look at it. Doubt it has anything new. Oh, I noticed that, man. Yeah, PED. PED actually had second quarter results come out, maybe. Let's see. Yeah, maybe bad second quarter results. I'm looking for PED. I don't see it anywhere. Yeah, I don't see anything for PED. Uh, maybe bad second quarter results, though. I'll have to do a little, be a little bit more thorough with it. Looking at staff, most likely just up on technicals and uh, RIOT, which was up because Bitcoin was spiking yesterday. But look at DM starting to get a little bit of more momentum there, kind of sliding up. You know what I mean? So we'll see where that one goes. But yeah, that's it. That's far. Uh, let me know if you guys see anything else.
Right. For sure. All right. All right, so MU, some people bringing up MU. MU's being a little bit more uh, active. Uh, I'll definitely watch this one. I've traded it before. Um, it's usually a pretty active tech stock. Now let's look at the daily real quick, see what it looks like on the daily chart. Um, not a bad daily. I mean, I think it has to get over this 57 level and hold. Uh, where's it at now? It's at 57.34, so it's got to find some support here. We'll see. Uh, PED second investor, or second, second instant investor released today. All right, appreciate that, Zen. Yeah, watch an MTSL for sure. Dog coin strikes again. I have no idea, Skynet. I don't even know what that is, brother. <laughs> I'll have to look into crypto one day. I finally got approved for Robinhood. Uh, crypto, but I've never used it, never sold it. What's up, outsiders? Up to 976. Yeah, I'll watch it at that level. That looks good. What's up, Pierre? Good morning, brother. Good morning, Sean. Oh, Mitch is muted. Yeah, maybe Mitch was muted. Sorry, guys. I mean, Mitch wasn't muted. You guys could hear him, but it was very, very minor. Sorry about that. Uh, Macau, appreciate the sub, Macau. Welcome, brother. Appreciate it, man. All right, that should fix it. Good morning, Carlos. What's up, brother? Uh, Adley, do you have to open a margin account for Thinkorswim to be able to trade three times during the week? Because cash accounts, you have to wait three days after one trade. Um, I think it's actually the opposite. So I'm not 100% sure, so it's best to always ask TD Ameritrade. But from my experience, when I traded on TD Ameritrade with, I think I had like a, I had like a $2,000 account on TD. Um, you know, when, and it was a cash account. It wasn't a margin account. And so every time I would trade, I would look at my uh, DT left. You can see right here, I can just open it up. I don't have much left in here. I think I got like 10 bucks, yeah. Um, but you can see it says DT left for day trades left here. Uh, it might go down to two. Like if I got into a trade today on TD Ameritrade, it might go down to two. But then the next day, it would immediately go back to three. And so if it was a cash account, my day trades would just reset every day since it was a cash account. And I think I was able to trade as much as I wanted. But I'm not 100% sure. And there's still, even with the pattern day trading rule, there still is the T2 rule, the T plus 2 rule. And so regardless, you're going to have to wait two days for your funds to settle after each trade, regardless of whether you have to follow the PDT rule or not. But if you have enough to, you know, like if you have three, 4,000 bucks and you can get in 1,000 in equity every day, you know, that would work as well. But it's best to ask TD Ameritrade, in my opinion. What's up, James? Good morning, brother. Uh, HD Genesis. Um... Here, this is my watch list HD. AMLP Outsiders. Yeah, AMLP looks good. And it is tradable. So, yeah, I appreciate that. A uh, very small range, but gapping up, you know, almost 10%. So, it looks good. But look at DM starting to run, testing this. 1725 level right now in pre we'll see where it goes who would still early this morning uh there goes a amlp dropping we still got 20 minutes yeah no worries adelie but yeah that's just from my experience adelie adelie like i said from, from what i remember my day trades would reset 
after each trade because it was a cash account but i still had to follow the t2 rule so i still had to wait two days for my funds to settle and with a uh, you know with a two thousand dollar account you're basically you know you, you basically have to follow the pdt rule regardless just because i have to wait two days each time i trade for my funds to settle you know a uh, bmock asking how do i get the vwap and ema lines up on the thinkorswim charts uh, so you go to studies right here. Man, I can't get it to go the other way. Yeah, you go to studies. Um, I just go to studies, add study, trend studies, VWAP. Right, so if I go to edit studies, like you can see here, um, you can go to edit studies, add it that way. But I just go to studies, trend studies, VWAP. Uh, yeah, appreciate that tiny MTSL who gets this. Yeah, MTSL looks good. Um, interesting daily chart here. Watching it for a possible reversal back down to 135, 140, maybe 150, I guess. Um, so watching for a VWAP fade here. We'll see though. Looking strong. Appreciate the sub, Drew. Welcome, brother. Appreciate it, man. Uh, what was Skynet asking? Oh yeah, I do have a Discord group. Uh, I'll post it a little bit later, Skynet. Nobody really uses it. I think Seven's the only one that actually uses it. Yeah, I just never got into the RSI indicators then. Uh, I think every trader's different. I just like using the VWAP and uh, support and resistance. Alright, so you can see DM broke above the high of pre- We'll see if that previous resistance turns into support at 1730. Hey, appreciate it, AH. Um, hold on, got a sub. Asmodin, appreciate the sub, brother. Welcome, man. Uh, yeah, so this isn't really a second account. Like you, I have a few different accounts. Like I have one with Weeble, one with Robinhood. I have a U stock trade account. I have a Thinkorswim account, obviously. Um, but this is the main one I trade on. This is my main account. Uh, the other ones, either I have to follow the PDT rule or they're just really, really small accounts. And so this is the main account I trade with. Appreciate it, Zen. But yeah, look at uh, DM. So like I said, I want to see DM push over the 1730 level, hold that previous resistance as support at 1750, and then continue to push up here. It's at 1755. It's going to be kind of a crucial level at this point. Uh, we'll see if it continues to go up. Unfortunately, I can't trade this one on TEFs. And so kind of bummed out about it. But uh, there's still a, few, a lot of different options to trade. I can get into all, of, all these three. And so watching them. But DM slowly starting to look pretty decent here. Yeah, my name's John, Adelie. You see a few people call me John. In fact, I think Cool this morning was like, is there a better duo than John and Mitch in the morning? Yeah, there you go. See, Sean's on it. Yeah, no worries who got this. I never shorted Tyrone on Weeble. Um... The reason I didn't short is because, like I said, my Webull account was relatively small. And to short on Webull, you have to have a margin account over $2,000. And so uh, I just didn't have a $2,000 account. And so I never got to short. I did get in a few trades in pre-market, though. And the pre-market fills were actually pretty good on Webull. R-C-O-N, Sunil. Uh, let me see. Hold on. A-M-L-P. RCON. Um, RCON, I mean, it looks weak at this point, to be honest, for me. It's only up about 10 cents now. It went all the way up to 225 and then all the way back down to 170. So I can't remember why this one's moving, but they may have seen something in the press release or catalyst that traders didn't like, and so they're kind of dragging it down. But uh, we'll see. I, I like it better for a short under 150, but it could easily push up. And like I always say, I'm not an investment professional. I'm, I, you know, it's really hard to predict where the stock's gonna do. I just prefer to react to what it does do, if that makes sense. Yeah, Mitch isn't here right now. I think Mitch took a phone call. He'll be back. 
CRNX IPO yesterday, GC. It uh, looks bullish for sure. Um, it's up. What is that? Uh, six bucks. And so, yeah, it looks bullish for sure. We'll see where it goes today. A lot of times IPOs are tradable. So let's see. Yeah, it's tradable on TEFs. Uh, I've had pretty poor results trading IPOs in the past. The best IPO I ever traded was Roku. I traded this one on uh, opening day. And I got in, not maybe not opening day, I got in at 18, I remember. Yeah, maybe it was opening day. But I traded this one, I got in at like 18, I wrote it up, I held it overnight and wrote it up the next morning to like 24, 25. And so that was actually the biggest percentage gain I've ever had, uh, was an IPO ROKU overnight hold. FCX under less, yesterday's lows. Yeah, eBay's looking weak as well. Yeah, uh, I agree with Skynet. Relatively low volume. FCX. Yeah, FCX is right around that low of yesterday at 1638. Might be interesting if it breaks under there. Uh, looks like a, you know, smaller range stock. It's probably tradable, I'm guessing. Yeah, it is tradable, so that's good. All right, so AMLP bouncing off the VWAP a little bit here in the uh, 1060 level. But yeah, not too bad of a morning here. Yeah, hopefully I can keep the streak going. Um, you know, yesterday I had three out of uh, five days I was profitable, so a net profit week last week. Uh, the last three days have all been green days. I haven't had a losing day this week, and so hopefully I can keep that streak going. Um, no pressure though. If I don't see anything I like, I'm not going to force anything. That's the biggest thing is that I don't want to give up my gains on this week. And so just got to take it slow, uh, wait for a plus premium setups and ignore everything else. Um, so just got to take it slow, but hopefully I can finish the week out strong and, um, you know, you know, obviously I'm pulling for a perfect week here. I haven't had a losing trade yet. So obviously I would love to have five green days no losing trades this week, but I don't know how realistic that is. And I can't let that affect me if I do have a losing trade. So just going to be trying to finish the week out strong here today and tomorrow. Going to be really careful tomorrow because Fridays historically aren't my best days, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, my main watches are these two, RKDA and MTSL. Looking at both of these for a potential short, see if we can get them under um, RKDA, watching it under 8, MTSL, uh, just seeing if it'll hold under some of these uh, support levels, maybe at 275 or yeah, 275, 250, see if it washes out underneath those, gives me a, good, a few good opportunities there. Wish I could trade DM, but unfortunately it's not tradable. All right, all right, guys. I'm back. I'm back. All right, Mitch. Uh, here, take over, brother. I'll be right back. All right, boys. How we doing, boys and girls? We got some really good girl traders actually in this chat room. Um, but I'm gonna talk right now about MTSL. Hey guys, I'm looking at this chart. I'm right now, I'm looking at it on a five minute. I like looking at five minute pre market. It helps out. You know, pre market one minute charts look a little bit weird. Um, and I can see on the five minute, you know, we had this breakdown. An important level was 315. 315 broke down. Um, it was yesterday at 1120. All right. So then now we're seeing it like come right back up there to those levels. You've seen this last little run there, pre market at 8 a.m. And it got up there to the high of 325. All right, so now we're just seeing kind of like more of a cup and handle pattern here. So what I want to see is honestly an attempt run at the open to that resistance up there at 323. When we get that run to 323, I'm expecting it to come down a little bit. I want to see it hold VWAP, 
hold the nine EMAs, just kind of stay there for a little bit, consolidate in a tight little area for about one to two candles. And then, then if we surge through the pre-market high, which is 325, that's where I'm going to be looking to get in and longing this to the next resistance, which is up there to the 360s. It'll be small share size, guys. I'm just going to more than likely, I got to find the bottom. I'm just trying to call it out earlier so you guys kind of see my visualization of what I'm looking for in my trade. So um, another trade that I'll be looking at, guys, is uh, PED. PED. Uh, an important spot I'm looking at is 279. 279, I see the resistance there on the daily. Um, if it gets past that is when I'll start looking at this more of in a bullish sense. Until then, I'm kind of more bearish on PED. But I'm going to more just watch this one at the open, see where it goes. Um, see that 274 resistance and then we'll see from there on if we can get up there into the threes MTSL has been holding pretty well and on the daily I could see it getting up there today maybe to test that um, daily high of on the 711 which is 414 so that's like the potential ultimate top there I can see it going up there but the good thing is that we seen volume come in it came down a little then volume came in again on this green candle down a little bit and then increased yesterday if we could see an increase of volume today and get up there probably about the 8 million mark that's what I would like to see for a real longest sense trying to get back up to those old daily highs Dries, why dries? Let's let's see why would you bring up dries, James? All right, James, what are you looking for in, in dries? You you think that it could maybe go bearish? Cause I could see I could see that falling through five, getting back down there to four dollars there. Is that what you're looking for in James? Are you bearish on dries? I actually like the chart. Put that one on the side. Looks pretty interesting. All right, I'm back. Good morning, right. Black Monday. What's up, brother? Uh, James brought up this dries. Looks like on a multi-day could break a uh, support level five dollars. Maybe get a VWAP fade there to about four thirties. You can see that potential. Yeah, I do see the little gap there. But man, DM still pushing up. Look at it, up to 18, 1835. Man, this thing is up from 1365, so $5 gain here. I'm not not quite $5, around $5 gain. Yeah, so that we can't trade it, right? Yeah. Let's see if for some reason they added it. No, still no. All right. Good morning, Eric. Good morning, Speedy. BPMX, Speedy. Yeah, look at BPMX. BPMX starting to run. Uh, seven. I remember seven used to trade this one all the time. Definitely a low floater, but it's starting to run here. Hey, Corey just quit his day job. Hey, good luck, brother. Good luck. You got this, man. You got this, brother. Hey, support, support. That is the goal. Good morning, Anthony. What's up, brother? I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm not so much of a work for the man kind of guy. I'm trying to, I'm more of the entrepreneur, trying to do different businesses so yeah. that I can make my own living. Me too. And thus is why I don't work for anybody. I hate, I hate having, I hate having a boss is what it is, you know? 
got no problem with authority, but you know, I always think that I can do things better. So that, that's why I work hard. I've gotten many promotions because of it, and I just feel like I always could be better than the person running the show. Yep. Me too, brother. Me too. SMIT pushing up. Uh, y G Y L. I don't know if that's right. Y G Y I. Yeah, Y G I I. Not that great. Uh, P V G. C B I O. We are watching C B I O under that 1075 level here. Um, I'm starting to like M T S L a little bit more. Or not uh, A M L P. Look at A M L P, Mitch. Have you looked at that one yet? Yeah, I saw it. Um, I had it on a chart to the side. Um, I'm not sure it's my favorite chart. I'll take a look more into it. Appreciate the sub, Jody. Welcome. It's appreciate one it. One that I haven't really looked into. Did you see if there's any news on it? Um, I think there probably will be. Let me see. See what is it? AMLP. Uh, no, no catalyst that I can see on AMLP. All right, no That's catalyst. Weird. How much is it really jumping? Okay, it has a daily bull flag. Um, the important level I'm seeing here is going to be that 1050. 1050. Right. Above 1050, guys, this will be a bullish sense. And then I'll look for a long over there. Well, it's over 1050 already. Uh, it's gapping it's up. In pre yeah, it's almost How up to 11. It? It's at 1085 right, so now. You see, that's where it broke out from because that's the breakout spot. Yep. All right, so then that could be the breakdown spot, guys. 11. You'll look for that as the breakdown spot. So now 1072, What? where is it at? on the? It's the at 1085. Today? I think it's at 1085 at this point. How is that 1072 range? What, what happened there? All right, you guys see? It found support there. Yep. You see, I'm just going off the daily. I'm not even looking at the one minute. So that's why I'm, I'm just calling out prices. Um, okay, so then the next important level I see is going to be that 11. I think it can get to that 11, guys. Yeah, I think that's the biggest level here as well because it'll break the pre-market high at 10.98 and then 11. Uh, C-A-R-A. I think 11 is possible for this, guys. Um, then from 11, let's see what's the next major daily. Yeah, look at C-A-R-A. Somebody's mentioned C-A-R-A as well. 10.30s. 1032 guys 1032 that's what I would look for for that breakout on 11 you can see a 30 cent potential gain on that breakout through 11 appreciate the sub Gabriel welcome brother appreciate it man I like to always measure the base of the flag right here and I'm getting what we get here 50 cents guys 50 cents from the breakout is from the, at least the base of the flag pole for Alps so I'll be watching it I want to get uh, through that 11 and hold 11s yeah and that'll be my interested spot to start looking at it I got more stocks and I'm kind of more interested so I'm putting an alert on thinkorswim I, I really really like the alerts on thinkorswim I feel like they work the best hey Corey good luck brother good luck yeah man Corey so uh, what I do is like I, All right, guys. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. But yeah, Corey, I have, I'm a real estate agent as well. So I'm a real estate agent. I have an Amazon business. I have a Kindle business and I day trade and use this YouTube channel. And so I have a few different kind of online businesses. Like I said, I don't like having a boss. <laughs> um, but yeah, man, good luck with that, brother. You got that. It's, it's easy, man. I passed it my first try. Uh, and so it, you should, Bless, you, you got it, brother. You got it, man. All right. We got five seconds. All right, guys. Out the gates, top watch, MTSL, CPAH. There's the bell. Looking for volume, guys. Um, RKDA pushing up a little bit here, MTSL dropping, SMIT running up here, a breaking over four. AMLP just tanked underneath Whoa. that support there. Look at that drop, man, down to 1060. But yeah, you can see no, S. Remember, remember, this has no catalyst, guys. SMIT. 
Uh, GC, I'm 30. I'm 30 years old. Uh, SMIT pushing up, testing four, trying to hold over four here. But yeah, look at that drop on AMLP here. Massive drop. Yeah, I'm paying attention to that. That looks like the best VWAP chance. <clears throat> also, staff. Staff, maybe potential on the VWAP bait. Yep. You want to see it break through that 286 pretty hard with good volume. Also watching you RKDA. Got good volume on this. All right, so I'm looking for a bounce for AMLP. There it is. I'm looking for a 1074 or 1070s in that range, somewhere in there. I need a bounce. If I get that bounce to that VWAP. Get look, up there. Look at RKDA, Mitch. VWAP needs to come down some, so the volume has to come into play here. But RKDA dropping down under 8. I've seen it bounce twice to the 72s, and then it just really, really quickly came down on AMLP. It's getting way down there. Huge sizing, though. Yeah. It's, ML, it's a higher float MTSL. stock. SL. Guys, MTSL, they're shooting up there at the open now. Huge volume at the open. There you go. We're going to see that level get tested there right goes, here. There 330. 329. Remember I told you that was the resistance level. There's a resistance level right there holding that resistance. Uh, staff dropping under that support it had at... 285 it's down to 282 now look at mtsl Thanks. breaking the pre-market high it's up to 331 now all right guys now let's see if that becomes a support there if it becomes a support through the 360s is what the next level is 364 367s in that range up to two 340s 347s it's going to test 350 there's the 350 break this thing's going to get halted if it keeps going like this uh, it needs to hold no, support over 350. Right here. Yeah, for sure. Pull back here. All right, guys, looking for a 329, 320 entrance. I'm looking for it to pull back, and I'd look for an entry. Mm. Held those uh, 33s there, but I'm looking for that pullback. I like to get in when it's red, when it's slightly red there. eBay still falling here. eBay down to 3460s. All right, here's the bounce on AMLP. All right, guys, I'm in there at 28s. Risking off of 310. Small size. All right, and I'm in AMLP with 100 shares. Um, getting in on the bounce here. Stop is going to be 1070. Entry of 1062. All right, guys, taking half there. Half there at 330, 40. I, th I got 340s, half there. Looking for the resistance for the for the rest and the breakout. Nice trade, brother. Nice trade. Holding. Break even on the rest, guys. 328. This one's a fast one, guys. Just got to stay aware. It's holding those 340s good. That's what I want to see. Big sizing there at 350s. Let's go. Yeah, Looking okay, the breakout. Looking good, brother. Right, Looking not good. getting it. All right. So um, if it gets to that resistance now, I'll look to sell some there. I think it's going to pull back here. So 356 on that breakout, I'll sell a little bit. 328s, you guys. I'll have to get out. It's holding that support there, remember. The old old resistance became support at 329 there, guys. AMLP right around the VWAP. This is going to be the kind of crucial level with it here. All right, guys. That when it rips here, I'll look to probably sell some over there at 350s or above. I'll sell half and I'll keep the rest. I'm out, guys. 328. What was your gain, brother? Uh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It got... I mean, I got 100 shares there at 340, but it's not that bad. I mean, it, it went up 12, so I got $12 there. Nice. $12 gain. The potential there to rip through those 360s. 
So now you can look here the entry here. So 90 MA guys, the it went down to the 90 MA guys. That's where I, I always look for more of an entry. So now for my longer plays, um, I'm looking this more for a longer play. Now I'm gonna watch those 320s kind of hold there. All right, I'm so in. So that was that up and down one. What are you in, brother? So I'm in AMLP on this VWAP fade. Um, stop is 1070. Nice. We'll see, though. If it breaks this high right here, it could start to run. So I'm looking for it to turn back down, obviously, but um, small risk, like relatively like small it. risk. We'll see if it comes back down here. I'm in with you there. 1064. I like nice. it. I'm risking off a of 1070. Yeah, you got a little bit better entry than I do, but yeah, I'm risking off a of 1070 as well. Yeah, 1064 there, man. There you I go. got their 400 shares there, guys. Looking to take 200 off at 58 when it gets to 58 Let's see if it comes back down to 1055 yeah i'm good on it man uh my risk is still pretty small i like that the volume was only big on that red candle that short is getting in there short is joining us in with that vwap fade remember these are the kind of i like these this trade because it had no catalyst Look at staff. No Look at staff for the VWAP fade as well. Yeah, All right, so, that looks nice. I was watching that one. So if it starts to get squeezed up here, I'm gonna jump out. Like if it breaks, if it breaks the high of the day here, I'm probably gonna jump out. Um, not the high of the day. If it breaks over 1068, I'm out quickly on this one. Yeah, I like 1068. We see 1068. I'm holding for right now. Here comes the wash, guys. I have a, I have a feeling right here. If I get a little wash here. I don't know, man. I mean, if it breaks 1068, you know. Yeah. And we got our level. This is the, this is the crucial the level. Levels. Like, preferably, I'd like it to wash out before uh, before now. And so the fact that it hasn't yet is a little concerning, and it looks to be bear flagging or bull flagging a little bit at this point. All right, 367s. All right, seeing a lot of levels go through there. It's 66. 68 gets the I'm out. Yeah, I'm out, too. I got a quick, fine, though. yeah, a small loss, pretty small loss. I uh, still have time though. It's only eight thirty-eight, so the VWAP fade's still in play. We got a little bit of time. Yeah, with my four cent loss there, I'm still, I'm still green. So let's just focus in. Right for sure. All right, st staff is doing the same kind of test that we just got tested, testing that uh, two ninety-nine, three dollar mark. So what we'll do is we're watching, I'm watching both of these charts. If they fail to go long, then we'll definitely start looking at them. But they could also do that red to green. So staff looking like red to green there through the three dollars, guys. Um, but I'm I'm still not calling it along because I want that to go through the pre-market highs with three three thirties. For sure. Yeah, staff starting to reverse. It may be a washout long at this point. MTSL still pushing up about to break the highs here. Volume's a little low dries. today. Dries, dries, dries. What do you want to do, man? Too low volume for me. The chart looks bearish, but too low volume. Uh, look at MEET, guys. MEET. Uh, MEET starting to run here. It's up to 475, 474. Meet. CTIC starting to run a little bit here, about to test 250. Yeah, it could break out through the resistance is at 489, guys, for meat. SMRT Drive trying there. some here. That tank there. Watching RKDA here, if it finds resistance at 8.
I don't see too many good opportunities for a VWAP fade. Maybe CBIO here, although the volume's you know pretty low, and that's the only concerning aspect of it on CBIO is that the volume's right, just a little short tough. Today. AMLP 10.66, risking off 10.72 there, guys. Six cent risk. So I've total I'll be end up risking about 10 cents on this stock. That's just probably about as much as I want to do. But I saw this little drop there on the level twos. People going short there at 67s. I saw a big size in there in the 70s. So I'm taking my chance there. SMIT breaking under the lows of the day here. Staff pulling back some, testing the VWAP area, STAF. 4,600 shares, 42, three orders of 48,000, and the 40,000 just went through there at 67. On AMLP? Yeah. Yeah, it's a higher float Huge stock, orders. though. It's a higher float stock, and so they're going to be yeah, bigger how, orders. How, how big is this float? I don't know. I can just tell by looking at it that the float's larger. Um, let me look uh, let it me up. Check this. Yeah, lots, lots of share. The micro caps in, in the ten billion. It's huge. All right. Well, I, I like my entry, so you guys already know I'm in there at sixty sevens. Yeah, the float for AMLP is. I'm liking it. Uh, let me guys, see. Guys, I'm liking this. I just needed to crash here. If it crashes here, I'll look for like about. 1060s to take the first cover. Yeah, I'm not seeing any float on AMLP. I'm still looking. See if I can find it. Looking for the wash. Just look for this. I got it though. Don't worry about the float. Um, I'm seeing staff fail also there. All right, guys. So what I want to see is that resistance hold at 1072. It flops back over there to that 1070. I might even get out. But what I'm looking for is a little drop here. It needs to wash a little bit, at least to those 1063s. I won't take cover there, but. All right. Volume RKDA right there. breaking under the lows here. RKDA under the lows. All right, all right, guys. Sorry about that. I don't know what went wrong with my internet. Um, definitely frustrating, though. Uh, missed out on most of this morning. Kind of bummed out about it, but oh well. I got the stream back up and running. Uh, let me know if you can hear everything. Everything should be good at this point. Waiting for my Thinkorswim to restart. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and give Mitch a call back. But yeah, very frustrating. Comcast. I, I pay for the most expensive internet. Uh, so this stuff won't happen, so it's frustrating when it does. Hold on. What's up, brother? Alright, I got my internet fixed. The stream's back up and running. But man, Comcast, brother. Comcast is all I can really say, dude. <laughs> Don't worry, they're all <laughs> shitty. Yeah. Hey, shh. The stream's on, brother. The stream's on. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alright, guys. I'm back. What's up, guys? Okay, so... Forgive me for my Comcast horrible internet. I'm gonna have to talk with them. Uh, waiting for my Thinkorswim to update here. Probably just gonna have to restart my Thinkorswim. It looks like, and I will get. I'll just go ahead and put TradeNet's windows up. Watching MTSL here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it crashed through that uh that support that resistance, guys. It went to that resistance that 367 held there, and then I I wanted to see it swing actually up there again, and then I was actually gonna get interested if it touched it and held 340s. Look at RKDA for the tank. Cracked. Uh, Anthony, I'm in Texas, brother. I'm in Texas. But yeah, it is Comcast. Uh, that's who I have. Comcast Comcast has a monopoly out here. And so it is Comcast, which oh, is aggravating. That was aggravated. a nice VWAP fade right there. On RKDA? Yeah, it went yeah, right man. up there. Look at that. 834. That could have been your entry. Look how far from the body that is. 
that could have been my entry, but Comcast, you know. <laughs> Hey, no, but it's 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 a definitely a chart to add to the data. Honestly, I'm just so lost. Perfect. I'm just so lost with any other chart here. And I mean, this has rarely happened. The last time my internet went out was months and months ago, and so, I mean, it rarely happens. But when it does happen, it's definitely frustrating. Without a doubt, it's always gonna be frustrating. Missed the best time in the morning. Now I just gotta drink my coffee and have patience here. You know, one that I missed yesterday that I didn't wasn't able to bring up in the in the chat was C T I C. I watched it pre market, but man, that they did a beautiful view up, babe. I just usually don't like gap downs. Yeah, I feel you. Alright, so I got my thinkorswim chart back up. Let me get this working. Yeah, hey, I got out at AMLP guys there at sixty seven and it just was just wasn't doing anything for me. This will have to work. All right, so got everything back up and running here. The stream's not clear. All right, there we go. All right, yeah, it should start to kind of calm down. But yeah, look at MEET. MEET starting to tank here, broke underneath the VWAP, maybe a VWAP rejection here. Watching it around the low of the day on MEET. Yeah, look at that beautiful VWAP fade on RKDA. Yeah, I'm just now noticing that, man. Yeah, that was beautiful. Uh, I I really, really always think of RKDA as a short man. For sure. Seen the stock plenty of times. But I just didn't think after it faded so much free market that it was going to go down all the way to the shadow right which is down here to that 69 and then it could break down even further down to like 713 but it was definitely definitely a great possibility there a few other vwap fades i see look at uh ebay ebay vwap fade cbio vwap fade um oh ebay yeah ebay, eBay did, it, did a beautiful one and here goes the drop on mtsl testing three Interesting here. I got an alert. P E P E D P E D P E D guys. P E. All right. For the momentum play, I see momentum coming down to the 90 MA 277. Support there 265. Yeah, P E D running up here, testing three pullback. Three mark is going to be very, very actively watched by traders. As you see, plenty of them got trapped there at 290s. I see it coming down maybe 276, 277 mark. You could risk off of 265. Yeah, TCP. A, a quick, long look. Yeah, uh, what's up, Alpine? What's up, brother? Uh, Corey asked TPC Long. Mitch, you are the long master. What do you think on uh, TCP? What? I like it at 35, somewhere at 35, 30, 35, 15 range. Don't get it up here. It's That has a huge five-minute range. This is definitely a stock you don't want to be watching on a one-minute um, it has consolidated pretty tight, so it's giving you a better risk to reward, but you need to pull back somewhere. I say you can maybe get 35, 70s, 35, 60, 69. Let it pull back a little bit to the support. The support there is 35, 52. You should get an up three move soon to that uh, about 36.28 mark. You guys see that move for uh, PED coming down? 
holding that 90 MA there, guys. If you got your entry there at 90 MA, perfect entry, risking off 265, and now you look for that swing back. Your stop could be even tighter at 272 here. I know there's mad longs trapped on that move up. It moved up with such great momentum. About 40 cents there in three minutes. Man, my internet's still acting fishy here with Comcast. Ugh. You know, I pay for like the super, like I think they call it Comcast Blast or Splash yeah. or whatever it is, and it's still crapping out on me. Frustrating. I have uh, Spectrum over here. I have supposedly 400 megabytes, but I only get like three something. Yeah, my upload speed, or my download speed is supposed to be at least, you know, uh, at least 150 kilobytes per second. And my upload speed is supposed to be at least... Alright guys, long there on PED, looking for this move to 3. Risking it off 72, uh, 74, that's my risk. Trying to get this to magnet to 3. There it goes. Nice, brother. Nice. I see see some sellers up there. Two nineties. Those are the people that were longed earlier. I'm just watching them to freak out a little bit. Looking for ads there. This is more of a quick play, guys. Um, just trying to get back to longs. Uh, seeing the 90 MA there hold there a couple candles, and taking a chance here. Yeah, the next obvious level is 288. See if it finds resistance there with a risk of 273 if I was in it. The only thing I'm not liking is the five minute doesn't agree with me. And lately I've been really trying to get the five minute to agree with me. So I'm out there. I'll just take the break even trade there, guys. I, I got out right when it went down. <laughs> there, guys, you guys. That's fine there. But my thing is, I have rules next to me, and it's not abiding by my long rules, guys. I'm trying to abide by my long rules. It Look says at, that the one minute needs to hold tight, and the five minute support and five minute risk to reward needs to be right. And here, if I go to the five minute, the 90 MA there, down there, it's 270s. So I'm gonna hold off, guys. I'll hold my wrist for this trade. All right, James. Have a good day, brother. Happy birthday to your stepdaughter, man. Uh, congrats on the 178 profit. Uh, look at TCP. Also, interesting level with MTSL here. All right. And you got wait for the 90 MA pullback now for TCP. I see it at. We got an average there. A little bit bigger stock 36 10 36 10 and then you could risk off that last support which was 35 95 if you wanted to take this the, sub, the bid there is not 36 02 so not more of my kind of trade but it definitely looks good guys five minute chart a little nice. spready but it's yeah, more it's expensive, that, but it's a more expensive stock. That's rough, salty. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, salty. That's rough, brother. You'll bounce back, man. Uh, Brendan, give me one second. I'll give you the link. Hold on. Oh, I actually have a new link for TradeNet that gets you uh, twenty percent off for their sale. So uh, let me see. Nice. There you go. You hit them up for it. Yeah, yeah, they, they reached out to me yesterday, gave me a new link. So, yeah, you can sign up through me and still take advantage of the um, of the 20% off sale. So you get the intro package for four or three ninety nine, I believe. Yes, three ninety nine is correct. Yeah. All right, let's see. Okay, there's PED, guys. It's done that one up, one down, two up, two down here. We want to see it hold, start holding a nice support level. So this is what I meant by the five minute agreeing by the one minute. I felt like I was too early in it, and I think I was correct, you know, a little, a little bit early in the move. 
Um, I like that hold in the 9 EMA though earlier. So that 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 was a good spot to get in there on that first pullback. There's the link, uh, Brendan. I just posted the trade net link. I think it's the uh, 20% off link. Let me make sure. Kind of like SMIT for a possible bull flag here. Yeah, there. Yeah, it's 20% off. Uh, yeah, so there's the link. It's available until the 31st. Yeah, I want to go look at that guy's scanners that puts up the the scanners. Uh, Adrian's? Yeah, but he's, his, his is so lagged out. It's like right now at like 7 a.m. <laughs> oh, really? It, it's probably Comcast, man. Comcast. Uh, yeah, Brendan, I mean, I'm There's in the a U.S. There's breakout for PED through, through three. I'm going to watch for a pullback to the nine EMA hold there at 288. But yeah, Brendan, I'm in the U.S., so I'm pretty sure you can sign up as well. Uh, look at RKDA pulling back down here. Uh, it's kind of in a consolidation phase at this point, in a consolidation trend. It's got a double top up to 805, and then it's got a double bottom down to 775. And so um, about a 30-cent little channel here. We'll see where it, which way it breaks when it does break. Yeah, but PED is looking good eBay may be a VWAP fade here as well, um, although it's down significantly, and so I wouldn't be surprised to see eBay run back up. But yeah, there goes PED up to 312. It's not a bad idea with eBay. Uh, so growth, it's actually a TEFS. They partner with TEFS. You can see on the left side it's a TEFS trade account. Uh, but, I mean, if you... If there's a $700 max loss, and so if you go under, if you have the intro package and they offer you 14000 in buying power, if you go under 13300 they close your account down. I think you can rebuy once, growth plan. But yeah, you might ask me how I've had more than two uh, trade net accounts. Let's just say I have family members that like trade net as well. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah. You're supposed to only be able to sign up twice. Man, PED, that would have been a nice trade for you, brother. I don't mean to rub it in. It's just... Uh. Yeah. No, it is. It is. It's one of those that, like, you know... Uh, the, the real key that I got out there was... Was I started looking at my rules to the right. I have this little notepad thing right next to my order form. And I'm trying to abide by it. This isn't the real long play that I like. I like it to hold a little bit longer. Five minute hold more. Yeah, no worries, growth plan. Appreciate it, brother. Yeah, the entry was more that 281. So this is what I'm thinking for more of my long play, guys. So you guys can kind of more understand why I got out there. I'm looking for a five minute hold on a one minute chart with a good support holding at the 9 EMA on a stock that has some good extension with good volume ripping out. So there it had that $3 rip out. Then it held there one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, six minutes, seven minutes, and then ripped out. Right. So on the after that five minutes, after that five minute hold there, I'm gonna be looking for a nine EMA entrance with a, the support clearly defined because I've had those five minute, one minute candles. You can see uh, SMIT with a nice little VWAP fade again there, right around 350. Uh, it's not trade of one trade net. CBIO is right up around there now. And so watching CBIO as well, as well as eBay, they're both right around the VWAP. CPAH going off for me. Let's see what, what it did. It just came down. It broke down through the support there. Yeah, I need some more volume for sure on CPAH. Yeah, it was something more along. I just had an alert. Yeah. So these alerts have been helping me much lately. Just not not having to really pay attention too much. So I set uh, alerts on Thinkorswim just on the resistance and support levels that I I find important on the stock, so that once it goes off, I'm able to at least take a quick look, see if I'm interested or not. Um. So somebody's asking me, how do I si uh, set up? free level two feed from thinkorswim i'm gonna post a video adam uh it's a tutorial on how you actually do that so just give me a second um i have a video on it i'll post it in the chat
Hey guys, that uh TCP level. This is where I thought it would look interesting there, that three uh thirty six ten level. After it's done that, it did a red, nice little red. Now I could make a drive back up there. The risk would be off that last green candle's low, thirty five ninety. So you're risking twenty cents. I would see a potential high of thirty six eighties. 36.85 there. That's when I would, you can look for this trade. Has a great risk to reward if you're thinking about taking it. Appreciate it, Brendan. Uh, yeah, so I just posted the link for uh, the how to set up the live, the real time level two Adam G. Uh, so there's the link right there if you want to set it up. It's just a tutorial on YouTube on how to set it up. So we got some consolidation here with RKDA and MTSL. Uh, kind of a channel forming on MTSL in between. 325 and 3. Um, RKDA, maybe a little uh, ascending triangle here on RKDA, if you can see it here. Let me see if I can draw it really quick. So if it breaks here, it could start running up to maybe this 835 level. I don't think so, Adam, but I'm, I'm not I'm not 100% sure. I don't think it should, but like I said, not 100% sure. All right, so yeah, like I said, RKDA squeezing up. You can see this ascending triangle here. It's up to 815, testing the VWAP at this point. Um, interesting level here over this 825 VWAP area. And PED, we'll see if it can hold support at 3. I think that's kind of the next step in this long setup is to see if it flags, holds support at three, and then continues here. Yep. I'll learn from that one, guys. Can't be always perfect. Uh, so same, I... very similar pattern with MTSL here. Kind of another, MTSL there. another little uh, ascending triangle here. If you look, let's see if I can draw it. Kind of doing the same thing RKDA is. RKDA is currently breaking the VWAP. Yeah, I think looking back, AMLP was a little bit too high of a float stock for us to do this with, All Mitch. Right, guys. RKDA there, guys. I'm paying attention to this. I feel like it's just too overextended up there. I wish I would have been able to get those 27s. Off of 34, but I'm looking for a push. It's gonna try to test, I think, those pre market highs. Yeah, I think so as well. So that's one up, then we got another push. That's two tops. I want to see three tops. Some people like to get in there on the double top, but I'm looking for that third top. MTSL breaking the VWAP there. Kind of doing the same thing like you're saying. Yeah, RKDA, MTSL, very similar pattern here. Uh, a little different, but earlier in the day especially, but they're both kind of doing that ascending triangle move. And I think a lot of other traders see it, and so that's ultimately causing it to push up. I think RKDA should have more momentum than MTSL just because... RKDA had a current catalyst that came out today, which was positive. Uh, MTSL, I think, was a mover from yesterday and the day before. And so I think I think RKDA should have more momentum if you're going by the book. But you can never really tell. Nah. Do you see that RKDA gave you that shot, guys? It gave you that shot. I was, I was thinking uh, about taking those 827s. It double topped. When it went up there to 825, I was like, uh, 22s. <laughs> but the problem was the bodies. You see how the bodies don't even get above the VWAP really. It's just wicks more mainly. Yeah. That's that's what you want to see. And then it had a high wick when it crashed down earlier. Slow bodies, high wicks. With this, it could hold this 807 and try back up. So 
we'll we'll look for it to maybe bounce a little bit. Do uh, another test. Corey's asking, how does your VWAP fades uh, strategy work on Thursdays? I know Thursdays are typically washouts, so I feel like they have to be a good strategy for the end of the week. What's your feedback? Uh, yeah, I think Mitch and I just got into the wrong trade. I think we got into a little bit higher float of a stock. But I can yeah. see numerous examples of the VWAP fade. The most obvious one is RKDA here. You can see RKDA right around the open bounced exactly up to the VWAP at 834 and then ended up tanking all the way back down to 770. Um, another one you can look at is eBay here, EBAY, nice little VWAP fade, bullish trend, bounces up to test the VWAP at 35. It actually had a big spike though, but you can see it washed all the way down to 34.13. Um, CBIO has been fading all day with the VWAP fade right around the VWAP. You can see CBIO, bearish trend, uh, fading at the VWAP down to 10.65. Uh, you know, MTSL had a nice little VWAP rejection here. Um, right here, it ended up reversing eventually, but a VWAP rejection from 330 down to 3 looked good. Um, so yeah, I mean, I see a lot of them in play. The problem with it is that my internet, you know, kind of went out on me today. And so, I, I, you know, I, I have a small loss of 6 bucks. I'm still, you know, comfortably up on the week. Uh, I've had 3 green days, 1 red day, which is today, and a very small red day at that today. So I'm not stressing at all about it. Red days are going to happen. It's very rare that you'll get a perfect week, regardless of what anybody says. But I just, I'm glad my loss today was small and I'm still comfortably up on the week. So at this point, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on stuff. Um, I, like Mitch and I always say, I think the VWAP fade setup has a window of about the first 30 minutes or so. Maybe the first 20 or 30 minutes is when it, it is, you know, statistically yeah. the best setup. Uh, it's statistically the most reliable in the first 20 or 30 minutes after the open. After that, it's kind of a coin flip, I think, in I, my opinion. I wouldn't say you could even go tighter. I think you could do the first 15 minute, guys. Yeah, for sure. If you're not in there by the first 15 minutes, you're not really doing the VWAP fade strategy. You're more uh, now doing more VWAP rejections or a bear, a bearish pattern, maybe a bear flag pattern, and you're doing a little bit tighter window. Um, the real key to the VWAP fade, guys, is that when it washes through the support at the open, it needs to be high volume. Yeah, look at RKDA coming back down here. Somebody asked, um, sorry, John, where do you execute your orders at through Holy TradeNet? Those 827s. Yeah, brother. I think that, I, that was the spot. It wiped out, brother. But yeah, so this is TEFS, T-E-F-S. Um, it's the broker that partners with TradeNet. It's not actually TradeNet themselves. But yeah, you can see on the left side, this is TEFS, uh, which is TradeNet's partnering broker. Um, right side's Thinkorswim. But yeah, sorry, Mitch. No, you're fine. Got that double top there, guys. That's why it looked interesting there to take a risk there off the prior time that it, that resistance that it did last time when it VWAP test at 833. You could have risked just off of that. Right. BPMX kind of going sideways. Uh, STAF kind of testing around the lows here. It's got a lot of support above it. So we'll see. PED slowly starting to kind of push back up here. Maybe get up there to test those highs. GATX long, expensive. Uh, yeah, it's MTSL, been bouncing. MTSL, guys, is holding pretty well there, guys. To 340s there, guys. Yeah, you can see GATX is kind of like the VWAP fade the opposite of the VWAP fade. You can see a bearish or a bullish trend pull back down to the VWAP and then a bounce. And so it looks like it may work the opposing All direction right, as well. MTSL, guys, if it holds here and rips through 343s, it'll be more of a long for me off of 330s. Needs to rip through the high. DM finally fell back down. Same thing if it crashes through that level, through 330s, will be the opposite way. We have more of a VWAP rejection. Really not trying to take too many of these trades. I'm more trying to take statistical data on the revamp rejection. Now, I've lately seen myself lose way too many times on it. So more along, I'm just trying to take data on it. Right, for sure. Like you could see DM is a VWAP rejection at this point. And like we said, VWAP rejections come into play a little bit later. Usually they're in a bullish trend. And when they reverse and break under the VWAP, I look for them. But I haven't back tested the VWAP rejection as much as I have the VWAP fade. Um, the VWAP fade is a much 
more reliable setup in my opinion at least in the first 20 30 minutes or so um after that you know the vwap projection kind of comes into play and as you can see look at a dm is actually a really good example of the vwap projection look at this so the vwap projection is when the stock is above the vwap breaks underneath it like dm did when it pushes up to test the vwap the vwap holds it as resistance and it bear flags down and so you can see DM is kind of a picture perfect example of the VWAP rejection. But like I said, Mitch and I still have to back test the VWAP rejection. And so we're still kind of working on that. There's that 330 important level, guys. You see how I, that's why I called that level out there, guys. You see how it's just now it's important. It's teeter tottering, deciding if it's going to go, it's going to crack down through that support or if it wants to go long. Um, usually that's going to be a breakdown because you got that red candle doji right before it. TCP. I'll be right back, Mitch. Hold the chat down, brother. Yeah, you're good, man. All right, guys. If I see MTSL here, guys, try to attempt to go long here. Doesn't pass 338s. It'll be more of a short, and I'll start looking for a rewrap rejection strategy. Like I said, I want to make... It clear guys I won't be taking the trade but I'm gonna call out the alert for you guys just in case you guys want to see the strategy and see how it works sorry I haven't been in the chat room much um, when they crashed down I kind of closed the chat room so I haven't really been able to take a look at that just more along just paying attention to the stocks guys so if you guys have been asking me questions I haven't been answering you guys know why <laughs> nothing against you guys uh, TCP guys there it's just been holding much guys that's why I don't really like these bigger stocks that haven't gotten that much volume um, looks like it's gonna crash down there through the support but you still got an attempt for the alert earlier it would have still got a good amount there could have got up to the 53s uh, but. John Wasterman asking uh, can you explain the VWAP fade please um, so I can explain it real quick. I'm also going to post a link to the uh, tutorial video kind of explaining the VWAP fade. But this is it right here on AK RKDA. If you look at the top left chart, John, um, so you can see it's in a bearish trend. It's actually down after the open. It pulls up and tests that VWAP at 835, and that's when I want to enter it. I want to enter it on the VWAP test, which is kind of like the top of a, a, a pullback on a bear flag. So you can see bearish trend, pull up to the VWAP. This is where I enter it on the short side. I usually plan to take a partial at the low of the day. In this case, it would have been right around $8, and then let the rest kind of work a little bit down to 770 So this is a good example right, of it guys. on RKDA. I'm going to take a little chance here. Short 330s there, MTSL. Off of 340s, guys. For the VWAP rejection? Yep. All right, good luck, brother. Good luck, man. I saw the level twos there. Someone wanted to shake this down a little bit. They threw up mad on mad shares on the ask. I saw like 127 there go up there on the size just for a second there, right above that important price. What it does is it causes some pressure on the selling and so if people jump on the bid there and just crash it down because the ass size is so big so now the important level to really watch there is is this gets above 337 339 but 340 is really my out here risking 10 cents yeah no worries john um yeah so I'm, today I'm trying to just take it slow. Like like I said, I'm comfortably up on the week. One thing I noticed about myself is that, you know, my winning days, I'm pretty good about just keeping my profits, not forcing anything, not jumping back into anything else. But on my losing days, it's like I try to win back my losses. And I think that's a very common tale for traders to do is win back, is to try to revenge trade. And so today I'm down six bucks. That's okay. I'm still comfortably up on the week. And so hopefully I can finish the week out strong with a, you know, solid, uh, what would that be, 80% win rate this week. And so we'll see, but I'm probably done trading for the day. Uh, I do kind of like this setup that Mitch is talking about. There's the beautiful Boom. drop. Ooh, right there. Look at, there it there goes. There you go, guys. Hey, that's called reading those level twos, man. Getting a little bit better at that tape reading, guys. I saw the, that ass. That's a big seller there trying to make this crack down. He's, he's covering into this. Um, so I'm going to cover a little bit down here at 310. 
All right, covering half there, 310 there. The VWAP there projection. Got filled there. The VWAP projections. It's been in play lately, brother. You can see DM did the same thing. But yeah, this is the VWAP rejection that Mitch is in right now. Um, Half filled there, guys. Nice, brother. Right when right I... There. Right there. So now I'm looking for the bounce there. If it bounces back to 325s, I'll look for the ad. If it just crashes down, just let it crash. Right when I said it, I was like, yeah, I do like this setup that Mitch is in. And then boom. <laughs> it dropped quick. Damn, now I'm down to 305. Three dollars. Oh, low of the day test. Boom. There you go, brother. That's that's how we do it, guys. What was your gain? Uh, it's still going. Oh. <laughs> what was your position sizing originally? Um. So, uh, it's it, this is a, a four hundred position size, two hundred nice. cover there at three ten. Now I'm looking for this probably three dollars spot here. Take some more. Uh, Brendan, you can skip the demo. You don't. They're gonna send you the demo regardless. Right. Here, my bad, Mitch. Takes them right there. Three hundred five. There, I took a little bit more. I only got twenty five percent left. Hundred shares left. Just gonna let the last hundred shares just ride. If it bounces look, up, look at RKDA. Bounce, same add. thing. RKDA. Same thing. My bad, Mitch. But look at All RKDA. Right, Call it out, guys. Yeah, that should be. You should be comfortably up in that trade. What are you up? Uh, what? Hundred bucks, four hundred shares down. Watching to... this bounce, trying to think of a, maybe get an ad here if I can get it up there to a good level. Um, good level for me is going to be in the twenties. Has to be above twenty, twenty one, twenty threes. I'll look for an ad. Brendan asks, "Can I skip the demo, or do I have to trade the demo first? Like I said, you can skip the demo. When I, whenever my trade manager contacted me, I just told them that." I was ready for the funded account, and they emailed me my login within like a day or two. My bad, Mitch. I know you're in the trade. Mitch, you there, brother? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay. Just focus. We're looking for this bounce. Right. Trying to nail this. Right, for sure. I agree with Fahim though. You might want to, if you if you're especially if you're new to trading, it's probably best to, you know, back test your strategies first. Like I know Mitch and I have already back tested the VWAP fade setup. All right, guys. I didn't get my ad chance, but I'm up seventy right now, and I'm looking for this just to crash down here. My ad chance would have been there, a good bounce there to the twenty threes, twenty range. And I didn't get that bounce. So now instead, I'm just going to hold this last 100 shares. Looking for a break of the support, which is down there at 303. 303 is going to be an important area. If I can break that, I can see 289s coming. And that will be my last profit take. But yeah, RKDA and MTSL just making those massive drops really quickly there. But yeah, uh, Fahim is right though, Brendan. You wanna you wanna back test your strategy using. I mean, it's a hundred percent up to you. But if I were you, I'd back test your strategies first. Find out your niche in trading, and then back test it to make sure it's a, it has a legitimate edge. You know, that's what Mitch and I have done with this VWAP fade setup, and we're working on the VWAP projection at this point. Yeah, but, and the long also. Right, Mitch is kind of the long guy here. I'm more the short bias trader, yeah. but. I'm trying to work on something called the bull flag nine EMA. It's going to be after 945 time frame from 945 to 1015. Like I said earlier, the trade's looking well for me. But um, like I said earlier, the key is a one minute tight five minute hold with a five minute chart also supporting it. So multi time frame, good risk to reward ratio. It needs to be at least a three to one trade. And then I'll go ahead and I'll take more longs. Uh, RxN says the downside of TradeNet is you can't trade most of the small price stocks. It's not even the price of the stock with TradeNet. The biggest flaw is that for a stock to be tradable on TradeNet, it has to have 500,000 shares traded in the last three months. And so what happens a lot of the time is that a stock kind of goes crazy after having low volume. Like if a stock kind of comes out of nowhere after having low volume the last three months and starts to run, usually it's not tradable. Now they usually do a pretty good job of adding it as well, 
but that is something to consider is that the lower price stocks a lot of the time are not or not even the lower price stocks but stocks that have previously had low volume and then all of a sudden get a big volume spike many times those aren't tradable and they do a good job of adding those stocks the next day once they hit that 500,000 volume limit but at first like on if a stock starts to run big on the first day after having low volume you know many times it's not tradable like today DM wasn't tradable DM and you can see exactly like I said it had low volume uh, up until today and so they'll probably add it today or tomorrow hopefully but it wasn't tradable also SMIT same thing here had low volume and then kinda came out of nowhere um, and so this one wasn't tradable as well RKDA bouncing back down to test that 1062 level The good thing about covering those covers is now I'm just letting the trade work, guys. No pressure. Just let it work. McTermite says y'all strategies are way too complicated for this guy. I mean, I don't, I don't think they're that complicated. Like, usually, like, it's just a bearish trend and a bounce to the VWAP where my entry is. I mean, and it's a proven strategy. Like, this week I've had three green days, one red day, and the one red day I had, which is today, is a very small loss. And so I think it, you know, we back-tested it, and it's legitimate. Um, and so, you know, judging the last four months or the last four weeks, I've had three profitable weeks, one losing week in the last month. And so, I mean, regardless of the complication of the setup, I think it's a definitely a viable setup. But every trader is different. Every trader likes to trade differently. Um, I just see this setup have has an edge. You know, you can also see another VWAP fade on RKDA. You know, it pulled back up to the VWAP and then just faded back down. And so I think it's a viable setup for sure. It's just about whether it's for you or not. Every trader's different, you know what I mean? All right, guys. Sure, Still Johnny Boy. To hear. What's your joke, Johnny Boy? Sure, let's hear it, brother. I'm going to ban you if it's anything negative about us, though. <laughs> All right, above 315, guys, and I'll get out of MTSL. That's my top, that's if the pattern starts changing. It's been holding this one minute bearish pattern. I'm looking for it to crack this threes and get down to 290s, 292 area. And I'll take that last little bit of profit. All right, Will, have a good day, brother. Yeah, McTermite says it's just very different than what I do. Um, yeah, brother, every trader is differently, man. Um, you know, it's all about finding your niche in trading. My niche is shorting. Uh, you know, usually bear flag VWAP fades, sometimes VWAP rejections. And then, I mean, that's just my setup. It's what's worked for me thus far. It's what's has shown me consistent profits. And so it's all about what works for you, brother. Uh, no, we're not on Twitch, Will. I haven't set up a Twitch account yet. Yeah, I'm finding more and more guys with this VWAP rejection. You have to find like I did where you read the tape. And there's something there that tells you signifies with the pattern, with the VWAP rejection, that there's someone there big trying to hold it down. And that's what happened there. It did that last attempt run there. And I said, if it attempted to run and didn't get up there to the 340s, short it. So I already have that idea, right? And then when it runs up there, I see the big shorter just kind of fake out the market, throw a whole bunch of sizing on the ask. And he's not trying to get filled there. He doesn't care if it gets filled there because he's short already. All right, guys, I'm out there. Still, a, still a nice trade, a brother. It wasn't pay attention too much. What, what but... is that, a $60 gain? Yeah. Nice, brother, nice. Yeah, I mean, there's a few different good examples of the VWAP rejection. Uh, I really like DM's VWAP projection here. A uh, very obvious VWAP projection. Bullish no, trend. Guys. Earlier, this is where I was looking for the early bounce to add there. So it's still not that bad, but you could get up to the VWAP and get squeezed on. So that's why I got out there. Right. Also, maybe uh, maybe AMLP for a VWAP rejection. I don't like it as much, but you could see AMLP for a possible VWAP rejection. Yeah, I'm, I've been watching that one. The key is you did get a nice volume, nice volume there, candle last 
1038. I didn't see the share size that went through there, but I know it was a pretty big amount. See MTSL there, those 323s, that was a good area to add. As you can see, it was having trouble getting through there. It was just, just more along just so I can start learning more about the setup. But definitely the re rejection isn't as, I say, accurate. Um, the only time it becomes more accurate is when you get something to signify strong, strong trend change like that when you get a shorter or someone throwing up size on the ask, or you could also see someone bidding, bidding hard on the breakdown. Right. For sure. That takes more skill guys. That takes, uh, you know, I've been training now at least doing this for more than two years, about two and a half years, almost three years. So I, the tape reading that I have is a lot, you know, a lot longer than most traders. Most traders give up after a year. Yeah, for sure. I think that's why most traders fail is they give up pretty quick. It's, it's not something that, you know, it's like, you see guys, look at MTSL there. That add at 323, that's what you want to do. And then you get this next push down, take half of it off there again. Do the same kind of strategy. The size in, sizing out strategy, I think, works the best. Um, you know, you're taking profits. You're also adding position because of momentum. You're seeing the continued momentum. Um, from what I had been learning, it's more called like base base position and then a momentum position. So your base position is that early short, and then you're taking some off because of the momentum going your way. And then as momentum comes back, you're looking to add sizing and then take some off again. So you add and you call that your momentum shares. So you can add like 200 back keep a hundred of your early shares and then at, take those 200 shares off again as you get that momentum right back down. Yep. So anyways, guys, I'm probably going to go ahead and close the stream down now. Volume slowing down. Uh, not a bad week thus far. Three green days, one small red day. So I'm still up comfortably on the week. Hopefully I can finish the week out strong tomorrow, but I'm not going to chase and force anything tomorrow. Uh, my inner Green streaking, guys. Green streaking all yeah. week long. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm kind of bummed out. I think it would have been a green day because there was a lot of VWAP fades that were viable, but my internet kind of went out on me. So uh, I talked to Comcast. Hopefully my internet will work fine tomorrow. But uh, yeah, guys, good luck for the rest of the day. If you haven't already, I day trade live on stream every weekday morning starting at 8.45 a.m. market time. Usually stream until about 10.15, 10.30, uh, stream to 10.40 today. So good luck for the rest of the day, guys. I'll see you all tomorrow. I should have a watch list video out as well. But yeah, good luck for the rest of the day. And uh, Mitch, you want to say anything, brother? Um, nah, just, uh, just like always, guys, you know, the main key, you know, I also like is visualization. Um, visualizing your trades, that means take as many screenshots of charts to your strategy as you can. Always look at them early in the morning. Visualize your trades. See how you want the trade to go. And this is what you're going to be looking for. So it's kind of like the same way as a baseball player hits you know, batting practice and hits 200 pitches before a game. The same way you got to do, you got to look at charts over and over, understanding your strategy, visualizing what you want to see so that the same way in a sport, when you see what you want, you go and you execute. For sure, brother, for sure. Let's let's finish the week out strong tomorrow, brother. Yeah, but man, we're going to finish this week out strong. We're going to plan for next week. Uh, next week. I'm thinking John's going to step up to the plate. Yeah, for sure. It's bigger sizing next week, bigger sizing. Yeah, guys, you guys get excited. We're going to be stepping up, and John's going to be taking some bigger swings. Uh, we're going to be setting a nice risk management plan for him. Probably about, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about two weeks, something. We can run like a trial, see how, see how his uh, stats go for you guys, and we'll keep doing these strategies, mainly it's VWAP fades. I'm sure that's what he's going to be working on. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. But all right, guys, I'll see you all tomorrow. Good luck for the rest of the day. Uh, stay green and good luck, guys. See you all later.